The poem we deal with today would be Imtiaz Tharkas at the Lahore Karhai. But before we move into the poem, I would like to introduce two words to you. The first word is becoming. Man is constantly evolving, constantly changing and adapting. Every day adds to the new you. The experiences that you have gathered over years, the changes friends have brought into you, family has brought into you, teachers, cousins, all those different experiences that has added into creating the you. You have evolved with time. The word becoming embodies all of that. The second word I would like to draw your attention to would be this word, resilience. After the 2018 devastating floods that happened to Kerala, we bounced back. After every terrorist attack, we have bounced back. Resilience is the survival instinct that we have, the elasticity of spirit that we have that tells us and motivates us not to sit down and cry after a tragedy, but to get up and keep going. After COVID, we will have this resilience with us that will make us go on. Keeping these words in mind, or rather, Imtiaz Tharkas at the Lahore Karhai happens in the border lines of these two words. Some terms that we have already looked in accordance to diasporic identity would be one, migrants. Migrants are a group of people who have moved outside home it could be an imagined concept too, but they have moved outside home to a different location. It could be for work, it could be for better living conditions, it could be a voluntary movement, or in other cases it could be a forceful movement where they did not have a choice. But dislocating oneself away from home, the process of moving away from home is called as migration. A parallel word to this, migrants and migration, would be diaspora. Religious groups or political groups or a minority group being held or living in another place would be what you mean by a diaspora. For example, Indian diaspora in England or Indian diaspora in Australia. A parallel word that stands along with the diaspora would be transnationalism. Transnationalism means you are constantly interacting between the boundaries of one country and the other. You are someone who keeps travelling from one place to another rather frequently. This also creates dislocation within you. And this also creates an identity crisis within you. This constant shuttling of one place to another makes you feel that you do not belong neither here nor there. The poet whom we talk about today, Imtiaz Tharkar, belongs to the tra transnationalist identity or rather has the transnationalist identity. Imtiaz Tharkar is a Pakistani-born British poet. She was born in Pakistan. She was raised in Glasgow. She married an Indian, was here in Mumbai for quite a while. She married again, moved to the UK, and currently she is the Chancellor of the Newcastle University. She identifies herself as the Scottish Muslim Calvinist. Multiple identities. And this crisscrossing of identities a mixed cultural heritage that she belongs to forms the heart of all of the writings of Imtiaz Tharkar. The poem we deal with at the Lahore Karhai 
speaks about a similar occasion, speaks about or rather voices for a dislocated person who is away from his homeland. At the Lahore Karhai, Lahore you would remember as one of the wealthiest cities in Pakistan. It is the capital of Pakistan's Punjab and Karhai, in our words a Kathai, would be a round circular cooking vessel familiar to the South Asian cuisine in particular. If you can keep an eye on the lines that are here and read along with me, the poem starts as this. It is a group of people who are there. They desire to go to the Lahore Karhai restaurant at Wembley. They pile into the car and the journey begins. Imtia Sarkar begins her very famous poem at the Lahore Karhai in this manner. It's a great day, Sunday, when we pile into the car and set off with a purpose, a pilgrimage across the city to Wembley, the Lahore Karhai. Lunch service has begun. No beer, we are Muslim. But the morning sun squeezed into juice and yad na jai in the two-in-one. She calls it a great day, a Sunday, a great day. And why would she call a Sunday a great day is where we'll come to at the end of our discussion. She calls it a great day and together along with friends, they pile into the car and as always, every journey is there with a purpose. This journey too is there with a purpose. You have this journey. We pile into the car, set off with a purpose, a pilgrimage across the city to Wembley, the Lahore Kar Hai. Wembley is a place in London which is a heavy representation of the South Asian population. Apparently, Wembley's Lahore Karhai restaurant is quite famous for its food. So the poet along with her friend by, friends, by the time they reach Wembley, by the time they reach this particular restaurant, lunch service has already begun. And she looks at the tender and says, no beer, we are Muslim. This is in the background, the alcohol is forbidden in Islam. It's considered as haram in Islam. But the morning sun squeezed into juice and yad na jaye on the two in one. These are two parallel images that I want you to remember. Morning sun squeezed into juice would be the first image of food that we have within the work. Yad na jaye. Yad Na Jai, it's a song from a 1963 classic called Dil Ek Mandar from Muhammad Rafi. It means memory doesn't go. Yad Na Jai Bite Dino Ki Jake Na Aaye Jo Din. When they walk into this restaurant on the Sunday Eve afternoon, this song is there in the background. It's a brilliant day, beautiful, almost as if the sun is squeezed into juice. They, there are a group of diners waiting for the food to come. And all in all, this journey is done with a purpose. The second stanza goes like this, where she does a comparison between the diners who are here at the Lahore Karhai restaurant and Truckers whom we meet on the Grand Trunk Road. The lines go like this. On the Grand Trunk Road, thundering across Punjab to Amritsar, this would be a dhaba, where the truck drivers pull in, swearing and sweating, full of lust for real food, just like home. Just like home. It is that desire to have food just like home that, have, that has made the diners take this journey across London to Wembley. It is that desire for food just like home that make the truck drivers 
through their journey that lasts over days, get into a dhaba and finally find a food that they would be comfortable with. So on the Grand Trunk Road, and the Grand Trunk Road is one of Asia's oldest roads. It connects Afghanistan, Pakistan, India and Bangladesh. These are roads that extend miles upon miles and quite often the journey that the truckers make or the trucks make would extend to days. The only respite that they have would be going into these thabas that are there, typical to the North Indian culture. Go to these thabas, you want some sort of semblance to the food that you have left behind at home. Look at the, look at the way she has written it. This would be a dhaba where the truck drivers pull in, swearing and sweating, two adjectives. They are tired, they are sweating, they are swearing, they are quite irritated. The only thing that they look at there would be food. Food just like home. The third stanza. Howling our overloaded lives, the extra mile, we are truckers of another kind. Looking hopefully, years away from Sailcoat and Chandigarh for the taste of our mother's hand in the cooking. So just like how the truckers have made this journey, wait for food just like home, we are another trucker, we are another kind of truckers. She brings a parallel between the truckers and herself and the group of people who are there with her and calls them all or rather tells them all is we're all truckers of another kind. And there is this one interesting word that she uses here, whole. Whole means drag our life, that extra mile. We are literally dragging our life that extra mile to go a little bit more. We, we don't mind traveling that extra mile to have something like home food. Why? Because it's going to take us to memories that we have left a long way back. So holding or rather dragging our overloaded lives and in just that one phrase, beautifully encompassed, lies a description of all of these people, identities of the migrant community. They are not easy lives. They are not simple lives. They are all complicated lives. Each of them in their own domains having a lot of problems and issues. And nothing more can be said in a poem of these many lines, so best keep it short and how she presents it as our overloaded lives. It could either on a very denotative level refer to the trucks that are overloaded, travelling crisscross across the countries, shifting things from one place to another, but here if we are going to think of ourselves as truckers, Aren't we also having many a burden to carry? So these overloaded lives, we are ready to drag these overloaded lives one little bit more, an extra mile. If it is going to give us some respite, some solution, some help, some peace, I'm going to be ready to do that. Look into the fourth stanza that we have here. So we have arrived at the stable, the Lahore runaway, the Sindhi refugee with his beautiful wife who prays each day to Krishna, keeper of her kitchen and her life, the Englishman too young to be flavoured by the Raj, the girls with silky hair wearing the confident air of Bombay. So these are the different people who are the people whom we meet at the Wembley restaurant? These are the people whom we meet. We meet people, a heterogeneous group from all over the world, right? People who are brought here by their own different circumstances. We get a peep into their different circumstances by the words that she gives here. One would be a Lahore runaway. 
a run away would be a person who runs away from a particular country and seeks asylum or refuge in another country we don't know what his problems were the only thing that we know is he wanted to go out get escape from the problems here and so he ran away the lahore runaway would be the first person we meet sitting there at the lahore karhai today waiting for his food to come the second person whom we meet again though he is not a runaway his situation in life is also not different he is a refugee again another person who has sought asylum in england so the sindhi refugee with his beautiful wife who is the keeper of her kitchen and her life why would she mention it in comparison to probably other people at other places like what we are about to say this lady is empowered to be the keeper of her life she keeps the kitchen she keeps her life and she seems to be happy at what she is doing in her or happy with the bowl that has been given on to her the next person we meet seems to be an englishman this man again has an englishman too young to be flavored by the raj rather he is too young to be colored by the post colonial notion or the colonial notions that marked his generation or marked his ancestors generation he is someone who we find to be not flavored by colonial impacts or colonial discussion he is too young it could be because he is young that all these notions of the white skin versus the brown skin or the black skin or the colonial superiority complex has not actually seeped in on him he seems to be sitting there very comfortably with this group probably having his own burdens in life over here to share a little bit of the indian food or the here the pakistani food englishman too young to be flavored but the word flavor immediately connects us to the food metaphors we would be discussing about image of the food is being given there to the reader again by the word flavoring what you put on top of your dish the next two people whom we meet would be from india they are the confident girls or rather the girls with silky hair wearing confident air of bombay remember imtiaz tarkar herself was here in bombay for quite a while so this heterogeneous group from different parts of the world are here at the table waiting for the food to come on the sunday morning rather afternoon so this winter moving on to the next stanza this winter we have learned to wear our past like summer clothes yes a great day a feast we swoop on a whole family of dishes the tarka dal is aunty hamida the karhai ghost is khala amina the gajar halwa is appa rashida and the warm naan is you look into this beautiful stanza where if we were talking about food as a metaphor so far here we have a very consciously built in simile tarka dal is aunty hamida when she thinks about food they're all sitting there waiting for the food to come the food comes in every morsel that you have yet you are about to take and keep into your mouth immediately takes you back to the relations you have missed or the relatives you have missed over these years or months it immediately food or the smell of the food the aroma of the food automatically takes you to aunty hamida khala amina aparishida 
your memory is automatically connected to these women who are there who made these food and whenever you're going to eat the same food anywhere in the world the smell and the taste of it is going to take you back to the relatives whom you miss this is beautifully brought in here look into how she says it again this winter we have learned to wear our past like summer clothes this is another brilliant image that she uses here in winter and during winter we have no particular use of the summer and i would want you to think about british winters which could be rather harsh during the british winters right we have no particular use of the summer clothes so what do you do with the summer clothes you fold them you keep them you keep them store them away because you know after this after the winter summer would come again and then you would need this back likewise you have memories stored up safely these memories you don't allow these memories it could be joyful memories it could be painful memories we call them nostalgia but nostalgia of the past should not stop me from realizing my today so i know that winter in winter just as how in winter summer clothes can be folded up and kept away likewise all those memories be it good and bad that i know of i store those memories and keep it somewhere within my mind safe and secure under lock and key i'm not going to take it out i'm not going to air it at all times i'm going to keep it these memories are precious to me and i'm going to keep it with me and they will be safe with me i'm not going to forget here because in winter see in winter we don't throw away the summer clothes that's simply not practical because after winter summer would come and you would need the clothes back likewise these memories that has been you that has made you that are relevant parts of you can't be thrown out at a rash they need to be stored they need to be saved they need to be kept somewhere where they can be recollected when we need it till then i've kept it safe this winter we have learned to wear our past like summer clothes yes a great day and if you could notice it is the second time she has used the word great in the beginning the poem opens with it's a great day sunday and the repetition or a reiteration would tell us how much relevant this journey is to the poet it's a great day why does she call it a great day because in front of her she sees a feast she sees a feast and look into the next word that she says we swoop on the word we swoop on the feast on a whole family of dishes swoop is a word that we normally associate with birds birds swooping on a uh, on something and taking it away a feast is how she thinks of it and not just a feast a whole family of dishes out there they're not just they're not just dishes to her anymore they become similes they become metaphors they become very very relevant to her because they are not just a tarka dal which is a dal dish dish uh, dish made of da dal it's not just a karhai ghost karhai ghost would be a mutton dish or a chicken dish made in a karhai a, a gravy a masala dish gajar halwa would be a sweet that you have after your food your carrot halwa 
But I don't see any of these three dishes in front of me. Instead, when I see them, when the smell of it reaches me, when I take the first bite, I am immediately taken back to all that I left behind back in Lahore. My auntie Hamida, my Kala Amina, my Appa Rashida. Kala would be a maternal sister, Appa would be maternal aunt and Appa would be a, a, mater, a sister, an elder sister. Sharp similes here, but the sharpest of all is yet to come. Look into the last line there. The line stays away from the rest of the stanza very clearly, highlighting its relevance. A warm nun is you. It's open to multiple interpretations. The you here is the sharp usage of a personal pronoun. It could be anybody. But by the placing of it, you know that it is someone who she relates with, someone who she cares about very much. And all the care, all the love, all that that person means to her, she sees in the warm nun that is there in front of her. Possibly, it would have taken her to a very close memory. We are not aware of what exactly the memory is, but so much we know that that you is very, very special to her. And just as that hot nun, just as how she savors the hot nun, so would she savor this relationship with this person. My hand stops halfway to my mouth. The Sunday light has locked on all of us. The honor smiling sun, the cook at the hot kebabs, Karthar, Rohini, Robert, Aisha, Sangam, I, bound together by the bread we break, sharing our continent. This is more like a photograph. Look into the words, the Sunday light has locked on all of us. It's rather in media's rest. Caught in between. The morning sunlight locked on all of them, caught in between, just as of how you would snap a photograph. All of these six people sharing the same bread and by sharing the bread that they have, they share a whole con continent. It's not just them again. The honor smiling son, the cook at the hot kebab, six of these people, they're all joined together, bound together. Bound here would mean joined together by the bread they break. And by sharing this bread, they would be sharing out a part of themselves, a little piece of themselves, a little piece of where they come from together sharing this continent. Then comes the most significant last lines of the poem. These are ways of remembering. Other days, we may prefer Chinese. These are ways of remembering and this is where resilience come into play. Even though the taste of this good food will drive us all, will drive us through London to Wembley, we will not be able to do this every day. Possibly we had been waiting for a Sunday to come, we had been planning this, this trip had been with a purpose and that's why she calls it a pilgrimage. Why? Because food took us back home. Food took us back to memories of home. She calls it a great day. She calls it the, she calls the Sunday a great day precisely because of this reason. Why? Because it did take her to the memories she left behind. So this was very, very crucial to her. But it is not going to be practical every day to do this journey. On all the other days, I wouldn't be adamant I would not 
I would not stress on the fact that I need tarka dal and naan and karhai gosht and gajar halwa. That would be a luxury. Instead, I would be happy in adopting and adapting what is available to me. I wouldn't care less if I was eating Chinese or eating a burger or eating a sandwich as is required for my survival. I am not fussy. I would eat what I get. But these are certain privileges I grant to myself. These are certain luxuries I grant to myself. And this is where we understand resilience. We will never let nostalgia, we will never let memories of the past hunt us down. It could be anything. It could be good memories that you are locked in. It could be bad memories that are troubling you and pulling you down. But never do we allow these memories to hurt us. We adopt and we adapt to what is around. And at certain times when we can afford this luxury, we go back to this memory. So this poem currently tells us about becoming, it tells us about resilience. In the poem, we find typical food images. Image of the morning sun being squeezed into juice, usage of the word flavoring, Food images are interwoven throughout the poem. We find the act of performing food in the poem. You have the cook at the hot kebabs. You have constant reminder that Tarka Dal is Aunty Hamida. Gajar Halwa is uh, Akhala Amina. In all possibility, the poet would be thinking about these women in the confines of their kitchen. The only way she could think about them would be them doing the process of cooking. So performing food is another aspect that we find within the poem. Food as a simile, for example, tarka dal, naan, warm naan, is you. Sharp similes are what you find in the poem in connection with food. Food as a metaphor, at a denotative level, it does tell us and connect us with this. Food is equal to memory, which is equal to the memory of home. So at a denotative level, food would be home here as a metaphor. What is the role of the food memories that she asks us to be in? They are here used to relive the past. They tell us of the past that she left behind. They are here to help her reconnect her familial ties. She thinks of her elder sister, her aunt, her maternal aunt. And whenever she has the food, the flavor, the texture, the taste of the food immediately triggers a memory. We call these mnemonic devices. Mnemonic devices could be familiar to you. We would have used it in our schools. They would be memory triggerers. One example would be to remember the spectrum of colors in the rainbow. Your teachers would have told you to remember Vib Gior, Violet Indigo and so on to remember the colors in the rainbow. So things that are given for us to help us remember and here food be the flavor texture or the taste of the food would help us remember something from the past a memory from the past it could be an individual memory that we are talking about specific memory like when i have tarka dal i have kala amina in kala hamida in my mind right or it could be a collective memory where all of them sit together and share the food this leaves us with, a, with one last fundamental point, and that is acculturation. Acculturation happens when we try to balance between cultures. We have found 
that the poem ends with these are the ways of remembering and on other days we may prefer chinese to sum it all acculturation helps us to understand or a person by doing acculturation which is a sociological theory it helps us to understand how a migrant becomes comfortable with the new environment he finds himself in how he acquires how he adapts how he adopts into the new culture that he finds himself in and just so that we are discussing migrants and we are discussing food i thought i would just drop this too for you sociological theories of a migrant being gelling into the culture that he is in diasporic community mixing with the culture that he is in are three over that has evolved over time three different sociological structures have evolved over time the first one that we deal with would be what you call as a melting pot theory and this immediately takes us to usa of the 1930s and the 1940s were armenians russians greeks indians everyone would come to us with their own individual cultures like a melting pot they would all blend together they would forget their own individual specific cultures and have one common culture see so us of the 20th century even in the 19th century was supposed to be a melting pot of cultures over time this has evolved into what we call as a mosaic as you can see here every tile in this mosaic is different canada is supposed to be a mosaic where all the communities reach over here multiple ethnic communities reach here they are they keep the values of their community they keep the typical uh, nature of their community intact at the same time remain within the broader segment of the society but the mosaic theory has sort of evolved again into another beautiful food imagery the salad bowl as you can see here salad bowl contains a lot of diverse elements each of these element has a typical flavor to add to the dish there is no element that is less nor is there an element that is more together they flavor the dish when migrant communities add on each of their typical ethnic value to the taste of the country not to the taste of the country to the merits of the country or to the country as such or the identity of the country they retain what is best with them at the same time they contribute together and just as how a wholesome salad bowl would be representative likewise all the communities ethnic communities within a society would together add on to this picture these are our ways of becoming these are the way we find within ourselves that niche to survive and not fall down we will survive because we are resilient people we are a group of resilient generation we will survive and imtia starkers at the lahore car high sends out that message of resilience